Okay, we are back for another Let's Talk About It with Jamie. And I do not want to mess up your last name, so I'm going to have her tell me how to pronounce it correctly. Um, but before I have her share a little bit about who she is, I have to tell you all, I am really, really excited about today's interview. Um, Jamie and I met at our Behind Her Brand conference. And um, I have to tell you, she was like, energy walking, um, positive. Um, she was engaging. She was friendly. And whenever you go to an event, and even though it was our event, <laughs> we don't always know everybody who comes. But when people walk in with such a good you know, personality and energy and feeling, it just draws you in. And I'm one of those kind of people that that makes a big difference. And Jamie is like that. And we got a chance to talk afterwards and all the things. And same person same exact energy, beautiful spirit. Um, she's a heart for God, heart for people, heart for service. And so today I wanted her to come on because I just wanted you guys to know who she is, what she does, because she's seriously one of the best people I've met recently. And I'm just so grateful our paths have crossed. So Jamie, can you please share with us a little bit about who you are and don't share anything about what you do, but just who Jamie is. Yes. So, <laughs> guys, I am Coach Jamie. Um, my last name is Starla. Yeah, my first and last name aren't spelled. As well, so that's why I just prefer Coach Jamie. But uh, listen, first of all, Kimberly, I'm honored to be here. Secondly, what you see in me is a reflection of you because that experience from my end of it, um, my first time walking in, not knowing what to expect, the energy you felt in that room was just so lighthearted and authentic and full of love and just like hope and everything. So, so I have to make sure I give massive <laughs> to you on that. But um, yes, uh, my name is Coach Jamie. Um, I am a lover of all things uh, Christ, CrossFit, and coffee. Um, I have two <laughs> rescue dogs uh, that I love dearly. But uh, yeah, energy is my thing. I love people. I love just all that God has given us the opportunity to do in this world and, and to best serve him while we're here. So I'm excited to, to see what that looks like today. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So Jamie does a lot of work with um, mindset transformations. And I know you have very two specific areas. Um, and I want you to share with me first, why is dealing with mindset transformation such an important work for you to do? Yes. So, oh, I can geek out on this forever, but <laughs> I fully believe everything starts and ends within the mind. And um, because I'm so involved in fitness, I like to give a lot of fitness analogies, although I'm not a fitness coach. Um, it just is the, it's easiest to articulate because I think, you know, we're also in a very big health and wellness boom. So people yeah. get it, but picture like your brain being just like a muscle in the gym, right? Mm -hmm. If you want your biceps to get stronger, you have to get uncomfortable and you have to work on them. You have to start lifting heavier if you want to then get even stronger from where you were before. And I think the brain works the same way. And it, I mean, it controls everything we do, right? The thoughts that we're aware of and the thoughts that we're not aware of. And it holds on to everything that we've carried and, and experienced throughout our lives. And and if that is making us live in doubt, if that is making us feel just down, then no wonder we have that weak muscle and life isn't what it could be. And so for me, like I said, I just, I think that's where it all starts and ends. And I, I am just so passionate about, like, everybody deserves to be happy. Does that mean we're going to be happy 100% of the time? No, we also yeah. have to be real, right? But it's a muscle that deserves to be trained because... God, God brought us here for a reason, right? And he didn't put us in, in this world to be miserable, right? We don't serve a God like that. So yeah, that's why, why I do it. You know, there's a lot of, in my opinion, um, sometimes misconceptions around when people think about mindset and, and, and developing this strong, strong um, mindset to do this, that, and the other, like you mentioned about being happy, what have you. What are some misconceptions you feel when people hear that sometimes they shut off and like, okay, I don't need this, or this feels too woo woo or, or whatever it might be. But you and I both know it's a daily journey, a daily walk, like you said, a muscle, you've got to keep working out. But what are some misconceptions when you, that you've heard when it comes to developing your mindset? Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, and it's funny because I, I also believe that one of my special gifts is that I'm a disruptor and mm -hmm. I cannot stand when people talk about daily affirmations and manifestation. That uh, word has gotten so sexy and like the 
unrealistic expectation that people yeah. meet in their brains. And especially with a lot of the woo woo stuff out there is like, if you just manifest it, life is going to be easy. You're going to be happy all the time. That's what sells right with even coaching is like, let me just paint this beautiful picture. And then you get to do a vi vision board and manifest this luxurious life where there's never any problems. And that's not how it works. And I, I love to speak in analogies. And so this is one that always works really well here. Like imagine storms, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, hey, there's this massive thunderstorm that knocked out my power. Oh, well, because I had a storm, I'm never going to see another storm again in my life. That's not mm -hmm. how weather works, right? Mm -hmm. We need the rain, right? The, the bad weather is going to come. That's what makes us appreciate the sunny days that much more. And the same works with our experiences in life. So I think a mm -hmm. big misconception is that we've become obsessed with the concept of being happy all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's being able to neutralize your experiences. So you're not constantly chasing this high of happiness, which we will get to that in a second. <laughs> yes, yes. I love that. You know, there is this term I heard not too long ago, and it made me think about what you just said that, um, and it's, it's not a positive term. It's like toxic positivity. Oh girl, that is my favorite <laughs> thing to speak on. I love talking toxic positivity. <laughs> okay. That. Well, I'm gonna let you jump into it because when I heard that I was like, you know, um, and well, let me preface this because I think you and I are very similar in this way. We choose every day how we choose to show up. Exactly. And I choose to show up with um, positivity, um, with joy. It does not mean that my life is perfect. It does not mean it's not, you know, I don't have my ups and my downs, but it is a daily choice that I choose to say, you know, I know what looking depressed feels like. I've been there before. I know what that feels like. I've been through that. But I also know that every day I have to choose what I, how I want to show up. And I've had some people sometimes misconstrue that. Like, do you ever go through anything? Like, are you always so happy? And it's like, no. And, and, you know, and, and then I grapple, Jamie, and tell me if you've ever experienced this too, that am I putting out something that's not real? Because it's not that I'm trying to pretend at all. It's but I'm choosing to be good today. You know what I mean? So t talk to me about that with your, your view on toxic positivity and that term and, and all the things around that. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to start from the end of part, the ending part yeah. of what you said and work my way to the beginning. So okay. what you have is a very strong resilience muscle right? You wouldn't look at somebody like Usain Bolt, who is a freaking phenomenal runner and right. be like, do you have ever days that you don't want to run? Well, duh. Yeah. But I mean, he yeah. had to keep practicing and work to get to that point of endurance where he can do it with such ease. And it's part of that routine and it's a disciplinary yeah. action. Right. And so with toxic positivity, one, there's, there's been proven like tons of health issues that you can actually have because of it. And what what toxic positivity reminds me of too is like the fake it till you make it mentality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like you're yeah. not showing up as you, right? Mm -hmm. If something makes you sad, like your body is telling you that for a reason. Again, mm -hmm. I got another analogy. If you eat a piece of raw chicken mm -hmm. and your stomach obviously doesn't like it and it's going to make mm -hmm. you want to throw up, sorry for mm -hmm. the visual guys, but <laughs> I, I like to make sure I drive my points home. You're not going to be like, no, I'm not sick. This is good. This feels great. Yeah. That's a toxic thing. Like your body is like, no, mayday, get this out. This isn't good. Yeah. Bad emotions are still just in an emotion. And so you can't force yourself to pretend that you're happy all the time because now mm -hmm. you're dismissing the things that are making you uncomfortable that are actually making you sad. Like yeah. it is normal to experience that. And that's why, like I said, it's such a trending thing where everybody is selling you happiness all the time, yeah. which is toxic because now you never see the side of them that doesn't feel that way. And you're miserable chasing after that the entire mm -hmm. time yeah. because you're waiting for that moment to drop that it all finally mm -hmm. makes sense. And you are finally happy and you're yeah. missing the mark. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Let me ask you a personal question around all of this, okay. because when someone's very passionate about this type of topic, that means you had to walk through it yourself. Share with us something about how you had to walk through your own mindset. Um, I'm not going to use the word struggle, journey, mm -hmm. and how you came to a place where I want to help others walk through the same thing. Absolutely. So uh, I came from a very chaotic, broken um, upbringing. 
And it was very confusing. Um, there was a lot of trauma in a very diverse amount of ways that happened. And it got to a point that when I was 13, um, I was diagnosed with depression. And in a six month time span, they tried me on four different antidepressants. And I'm like, how about I'm a, I'm a grieving hormonal teen yeah. trying to figure out her body, trying to figure out life, where she fits in, how you're, what a healthy relationship is supposed to look like, all those things. So I was such a negative, angry bitter human. Um, mm -hmm. This led to a lot of really more unfortunate events that unfolded in my life. Um, drugs, alcohol. Um, I was in a, an abusive relationship. I had attempted suicide on multiple occasions. And so I got to those very, very dark places. But to everybody who saw me during the day, I've always mm -hmm. had this energy. Yeah. But when I was not in a good mood, like I, I could totally make a room and light everybody up or I was going to tear you down with me. Mm. Like I had that power. And so it yeah. exhausted me a lot. And I personally would put this happy face on all the time. And I would pour into other people because I'm like, I so desperately wanted to feel that way. I never wanted somebody else to ever have to feel what yeah. I was feeling. And so it took a lot of growth and I am so grateful for my journey. Like one of my favorite, well, it's my least favorite question to have asked, but at the same time, it is my favorite because of the response I give, I don't have any regrets because mm -hmm. if I wouldn't have had to have been conditioned in that way, I mm -hmm. wouldn't have appreciated the good in my life. And I wouldn't have this pull to want to make sure that others are loved and able to experience the, the, the goodness of life in the same way. So yeah, mine all came from, literally having to experience it firsthand and have to wake up every day and learn to take my thoughts captive to learn how to discipline myself. Um, and it's super funny because uh, I, I, as I told you before we jumped on here, I volunteer for like five different organizations. Mm -hmm. um, but one of them is that I run a faith and fitness group and we talk about uh, training our spiritual muscles. So we do a workout and we do a physical workout, but it's all or a spiritual workout, but it's all based off of like putting God into it. And yeah. we were talking about the sense of self-control and to many people, they don't like that self-control makes them feel captive and that there's things that they're limited to do because they have to be disciplined, but really right. self-control and discipline is the very thing that allows you to live in freedom. So yeah, that's, that's kind of no, no, no. five different tangents. I'm sorry. You just got me super high. <laughs> No, but I love it though, because, you know, I, I've always find whenever you're passionate about something, it's because you have to walk through it. And I know we all have walked through it in different ways. Yeah. And I know that you work with a lot of people that still struggle with it in different capacities. So you work with a lot of professionals. I know business professionals, career professionals, executives, you name it. Um, what is some of the things that you're noticing when it comes to this space about um, mindset? I won't say issues, but mindset things that you see that people are struggling with maybe. Mm -hmm. And then also I want you to look at the question on the other side of it too. What are some things that you're seeing that people can do positively to uplevel their mindset? So both yeah. sides of the coin. Yeah. So, you know, first and foremost, um, I work with the workaholic, the people who are like, I always say this, I'm like, yeah, it's better than meth, but it's still a drug nonetheless, is that that is where all of their validation is, mm -hmm. is, is, is placed. They, they work their lives away because when I finally, when I finally close this deal, when I finally can afford this, when I finally finish out this quarter this way and I do this and that, and then I have the mm -hmm. perfect life to post on social media, then I'll be happy. So mm -hmm. they're chasing happiness. That is their drug of choice. And then all of a sudden what happens that, 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 that fix arrives, but it's just this quick fix and it didn't yeah. feel as good as what they amplified it to be in their head. And then now they're like, I need my next fix. I need my next fix. And then they're chasing mm -hmm. and they're burning out and they're putting this pressure on themselves. And it's all coming from a space of fear, unworthiness, um, that the validation of that, that's, what's going to make people love them. Like, especially about 40, I always preface this because you know, there are so many coaches out there and especially being a female coach, everybody assumes I only work with women. No, mm -hmm. about 40 to 45% of my business is men. And it's because mm -hmm. of the fact that especially that's them, right? Like they are known mm -hmm. to be the breadwinners and they have to be doing this and showing up a certain way. And mm -hmm. so that's a lot of pressure that they're putting on themselves. 
And what's missing is now that they are so fixated on work, they're not having any meaningful like connection within their relationships. They feel guilty when they stop working because they're like, mm-hmm. I just wasted my time. Yeah. I could have been working or they're, they're at their kid's baseball game and the whole time they're answering emails. So they're not even present and experiencing the life happening in front of them, men and women both. Right. Yeah. So that's very much what I see is that like, again, yes, there are far worse addictions that you could have, but addiction is addiction nonetheless. And it's because you are running from something you are chasing after this fantasy thing to pull you out of the reality at hand. And it's not something you want to face, right? Even somebody who's addicted to working out or addicted to music, we all have an addiction to some sort, Mm -hmm. whatever, even it's like self-soothing, right? But, and that isn't harmful, but it still can always become harmful when it's that you're constantly trying to escape your life. Like, and that's Mm -hmm. another thing I teach people how to do is like, I'm not trying to sell you financial freedom that you're going to stop working. It's I want to teach you how to live a life that you love and feel fulfilled in what you're doing that you don't need a vacation from. Because mm-hmm. again, these very people are addicted to their work, but they're like, I'm miserable, but yeah. I've already invested so much time and I have so much to do that I can't just stop and breathe, but they don't feel like they even are serving yeah. any purpose, but they keep chasing a high that they've yeah. never achieved. So that is very much what I see. And then on the flip side, how to face that, um, you know, I, and this is always what I start with. I mean, no matter what, I, I think that especially in this area, I mean, we do it for, for coaching to have somebody hold us accountable for like fitness and business and all of that. But like even more so like before hiring any form of mentor, coach, whatever, mm-hmm. you have got to learn how to sit with yourself. Hmm. And, you know, I know that this is also trending is where it is, the meditation, the affirmations, the gratitude journals, all of that is great. But like, I challenge people to actually put it on their calendar, make the time. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you don't have the time because people make time for the things they want to make time for. Mm -hmm. But is like sitting with yourself in silence. Do not have your phone near you, but actually like, Process what's going through your brain. Why do you think what you do about life? Why are you influenced of what other people are doing? And not Mm -hmm. even like, don't even be sitting and having a conversation with a very near and dear friend or loved one. Like, because now you're still at the influence and the mercy of what, what they're thinking, but just sitting with yourself and calming down enough to even know what it is that you're running from. Because more times than not, if you go to sit down, I can bet you probably 97% of our population within Mm -hmm. three minutes would start like jittering, right? Mm -hmm. Withdrawals. I need to be working. I need to be doing something. I need to be checking my phone. I need to go take care of the laundry. I need to go check to make sure the kids are making a mess in the bedroom, right? They're seeking a way out because they don't want to have to sit with their thoughts. Mm -hmm. Sit with their thoughts. So what's the other side of that? How does some, like, what are a couple of things um, that people can do now? I know you said sit with your thoughts for one. Is there a couple more things that if someone's listening to this right now saying, okay, that sounds like me. Um, didn't even realize that sounds like me. <laughs> you know, what can I do right now? So very first step. Um, and this is, again, as you mentioned, um, things that I learned because I was somebody who personally went through it. Um, I struggle with the word journal. And the reason why is because where I go is two different Mm -hmm. ways. One, I was a teacher's pet. I was a workaholic. I was a workaholic, even that young, where I was people pleasing like nobody's business. And I was always turning in my reports way before anybody else. So when I hear Mm -hmm. journal, first it's like, dear diary. And I'm writing (laughs) it from a space that like somebody's going to read it. So it isn't really like real. It's almost like I'm filling out a resume or something, right? So that's part one. And then part two is that whole I for a a small season of my life a few years back very much kind of got sucked into the woo woo side of things and where it was like the the journaling and the meditation and the manifestation. And for me, it just felt fluffy. And like, Mm -hmm. I again, it just I don't know, it didn't sit with me. So essentially, it is the same concept, though, is what I'm getting Mm -hmm. at here call it journaling, call it whatever you want. But 
I hope this analogy sets my workaholics free that are hearing this. I refer to it as brain dump. Because mm-hmm. journal, you feel you got to do every day. I mean, I suggest mm-hmm. the more you do it, the better. Writing your mm-hmm. thoughts out of your head and organizing them on paper is what we're doing. Okay. Mm-hmm. But the reason why I say the, the the term brain dump is because as workaholics, you're driven, you're very detail oriented. You want to complete a task and you want it to right. be done well. I don't want you to think you have to perform when you're mm-hmm. sitting with your own thoughts. Hmm. And when you're writing things down, so I'm like, picture it this way. When the trash in your kitchen starts getting stinky, what do you got to do? You got to take the trash outside. That's what we're going to do with the brain. When it starts getting stinky and there's a lot of stuff tossing and turning, you're going to take the trash out. We are dumping it out from the brain to the paper. The paper is your garbage bin. Okay. So I want you to dump out. I don't care if like you got like teardrops and the ink mm-hmm. is spread. I don't care if your grammar is correct. I don't care if you break it into to paragraphs, whatever it is, you just got to get the thoughts out on paper so yeah. you can see it for what it is. So yeah. time with self and brain dump. I love that. And you know, and I think even just sitting with that, that's sometimes a struggle for people right there, making that time for self. Cause I know we talk about self-care and things of that nature, but just being quiet Mm-hmm. And like I said, getting your thoughts out on paper. I do that often. I'm a big believer in that um, because it's amazing. Even when you're getting thoughts out, you find new thoughts are forming. You find things that you ne- haven't really processed coming on paper. And when you see it, I'm a, I'm a highly visual person. When I see my thoughts and I can see what I'm thinking and seeing different things that are coming out, it shapes things. It can shift your mindset. It can shift just even how you approach things when you really can see it on paper. And you know, and I know that, um, and there's some people I know, uh, one lady said, well, Kim, I'm not a really great journaler. She told me that before, but she likes to doodle. Mm-hmm. And so she loves to draw things out. And I'm like, whatever works for you. Yes, play, <laughs> whatever therapy, you're is huge. Yeah. play therapy is huge. Exactly. Look, whatever works for you. So I love that you shared all of that. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you two more questions because um, I know this is something you're really power- you're, you're not powerful. I'm sorry, passionate about. Um, the workaholic, but also the strong friend. Yes. So tell me about the strong friend. Yes. So more times than not, the strong friend is also the the workaholic, um, but not necessarily. And where this. So the reason also why this part is so passionate for me, just as much as what the workaholic is, is because, as I mentioned, is multiple times early on in my life, I tried ending my life. Um, And thank God every day that he protected me and did not allow that to happen because life has gotten a whole lot better since getting through. Um, and I didn't need to take that way out because he wasn't done. So got a preference in case anybody out there is feeling that way. Like if he woke you up today, like even if you have the smallest string of hope that you're holding on to the fact that, that you were woken up today, like, yeah, isn't done with you. And even if you don't feel like you're serving purpose right now, it may not be an immediate thing that that purpose is serving, but I promise you it's because it's coming. So, um, but so that's part of it. And, and, and. Um, especially um, being somebody that is single, never been married, doesn't have any kids. I have done life alone my my whole life, fought for myself my entire life. And um, so from that area, a lot of workaholics, even if they're in relationships, loneliness is something they feel. So I, I relate to that heavily, but loneliness also typically leads to a lot of depression and not wanting to be here. And the month of December, that's supposed to be the happiest time of the year being Christmas is actually the highest percentage of suicide rates and depression rates. Yeah. And so all of this started formulating when COVID happened, there was a lot of people that were dying of suicide and mm-hmm. everyone's like, don't forget to check on the strong friend. Don't forget mm-hmm. to check on them too. Well, then fast forward about like a year or so, Miss USA had died of suicide. Nobody saw it coming, right? She's this stunning, beautiful woman representing kindness and yeah. all of this. And she's no longer here. Everybody's but you know what's so funny? You know, interesting, Jamie, I don't know if you've seen it yet. Her mom is in our magazine this month. Is she? What? Yes. <gasps> See, I talk- a little God sprinkle <laughs> of just connecting this. I'm going to have to go read that. Yes, yeah, yes. Too. April's That's in there. That April. is your sign. Confirmation. Yes. That. Oh, yeah. April's in there now. And she's talked about that. Just what you're saying about the strong friend, which is one reason why I wanted to have you on here today, because, you know, she's still grieving, obviously. Yeah. But like you said, her daughter, you know, Chester was beautiful. 
I mean, accomplished. She was e-news correspondent, a lawyer, all these different things. Um, but the mindset, she was struggling. And so um, you're right. You know, that was a devastating, you know, story. And, and, um, and she talks a lot about that, like, you know, just checking in on that person, but also um, addressing the high functioning, mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. when people are like high function professionals that are still battling with a lot of mindset and you don't always see it because you only see the outside. So, yeah. 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 So, oh, I got chills when you said that. That's just yeah. um, my heart is so happy. <laughs> not, not that situation, but just well, that yeah. this conversation can hopefully set some people free along with now yes. this, this yes. interview with her. But, you know, and then the same thing happened with Twitch last December. Yeah. Again, another one like that one wrecked me because like that was yeah. Yeah, that, that one really, really emotionally messed with me. And so, but what I, where I'm getting at with all this, and I've even actually done a podcast episode on it, is that I was seeing all of these posts of people talking about that. And also, because guess what? It takes one to know one, guys. Again, why why mm -hmm. my ideal person that I work with is is because I, I, I've felt this firsthand. But um, mm -hmm. I'm going to take a step back, actually. So back when I was younger, when I graduated high school, I started working for myself doing hair right away. And, um, one of the continuing education courses they made us do was on like, especially like with human trafficking and stuff like that. I'm from Ohio. We were right at like the border of that in Michigan. So it was a big, big issue up there too. And, um, they would make us check for that. But then we were also talking about for like signs of like suicide and one study that I guess had happened, they said, if somebody is actually telling you that they're going to usually that is more of a, a sign that that's their outcry for help. But more times than not, the people that do end up doing it, they don't tell you before they do it. Yeah. Right. So both, obviously you have to make sure you pay attention to, but you know, just yet again, proving back to this. And so, um, with the strong friend though, is that a lot of times when people like think of check on them, right. The reason why they're the strong friend is because they're strong enough to be able to help you with your, your ish while, while they're dealing with their ish. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But you know, at some point and very similar to what I just shared, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. As I said, when I was little, I mm -hmm. did that and I loved so hard on everybody else because yeah. I desperately was needing that. And because I didn't get it or I was too prideful to ask for it, I didn't feel I was deserving of it. I did like, it was like a secondhand high, right? Mm -hmm. That was what I used to try to feel fulfilled because life isn't supposed to be about me anyways, Yeah. right? Yeah. Everybody else deserves to be happy, but not me. That's what like these thoughts yeah. are. And so a lot of times then when, when people say this whole check on your strong friend, it's, Hey, you're doing okay. I just thought of you. Mm -hmm. You can't stop there because your strong friend already, like they're also, their worth is tied to like, being there for you. And if they mm -hmm. tell you something's wrong, that could risk you needing them. And if you mm -hmm. don't need them, they now feel even worthless. Yeah. So there's a, there's a vicious cycle and know that you, that, you know, for also those that are hurting out there, like, you know, in this, this tough, this subject, since I know this is, this got really, really heavy, but like, mm -hmm. is that one, the, the, the people outside of that, like, you can't blame yourself. Like mm -hmm. if somebody doesn't communicate what's going on. You're not a mind reader. You can't beat yourself up thinking that you should have seen the signs. You should have done something different. Yeah. Yes. We can use this as a way to be able to ask more effective questions or find better ways to show up where it's like, Hey, I haven't heard from you for a while. Like, I'm just going to come over to your house. You drink, yeah. have a bottle of wine, or let's just go grab coffee or let's go see a movie. Let's just sit together. Yeah. What's something that mm -hmm. went really well in your life lately? Cause you know, what's crazy is I've bumped into a lot of my clients mm -hmm. that their best friend doesn't even know what they do for a living. Mm -hmm. Like they roughly know, but they've never actually asked because their commonality mm -hmm. was elsewhere. So there's always still so much to learn about the people closest to you. So ask better questions I agree. I agree. Leave it at, Oh, you doing okay. Okay, good. I just wanted to check on you. That's not, that's not checking in. Right. That's almost like, hey, checking off my list so that doesn't fall back on me if you're not OK. I did my due diligence. Mm -hmm. right? That's how it's going to feel. The strong friend. OK, mm -hmm. so that's one side. But then on the other side, for my strong friends out there. And like I said, all this is on my podcast too. one of the episodes if you guys want to listen to it. But um, you've got to be OK with asking for help. Yeah. 
right? You, you hear it all the time. True strength is in, in, in vulnerability and you not reaching out to ask for help is actually mm. you blocking somebody else, the ability to give a blessing. Mm. So even if your pride won't let you because you're afraid of looking weak, yeah. maybe that's a way that'll shift it is that you're, you're, you're robbing somebody the opportunity to bless someone. Because I promise you, even if those people, they don't feel like they're strong enough to handle it, they are. Because they yeah. love you. And even if it's just that they have to tell you or they just have to sit with you, like in the book of Job, right? Like, like I, say, I just need to sit with you for a minute, like whatever mm -hmm. that is. But you got to be okay with asking for help. And I, I think that you will be shocked at the type of mm -hmm. response that comes from that. Not going to be all the time because I can, again, takes one to no one. I have had situations where, again, on my part, I put an expectation on what that person should or how they should respond. And then I was upset with them when they didn't respond how I wanted them to. But I never communicated yeah. them that, dude, I don't want you to talk to me. Like, don't don't fix my problem. <laughs> I'm not coming right. to have you fix my problem. Can you just sit with me? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like. You have to be able, and that's also another reason why the whole mindset and just self-discovery and training that muscle is another big deal to me is because if you, if you don't even know yourself well enough to know how to articulate to somebody else, how it's not fair for you to expect somebody else to know how to either. I love that. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to stop. I just went on a big tangent. No, no, no. But you know, I wish we had more time because there's so much there to even unpack, like, especially yeah. with the expectation topic. Like, I hope you do a podcast even just around that alone, yes, you know? Because <laughs> I'm happy back that is, by the way. Right, right. Because there's just, it's just so much to unpack with all of that. But, yeah. you know, I will say this, and I, and I want you to share with anyone who may feel like, you know, identified with whether it's the workaholic, whether I feel like I'm, I'm the strong person, I always feel like I have to be strong, how they can get in contact with you. Um, but I think a lot of the key things that you're sharing too is the importance of being alone with your thoughts, making sure that you journal them, you write them down. That, uh, and, and let me say this too, if you're okay with me saying this, even when you're writing them down, this is like why the work with you is so important, that if you write down things that you are even afraid of, or it feels a little bit more like, oh my gosh, I gotta confront these thoughts, you know, you don't have to do that alone. That's right. what like people like Jamie do, do. They help you kind of work through and walk through and sift through and all the different type of things there because sometimes we need that other voice. We need that other perspective to come in and look at that. And the other side of that too, and this is a topic I think, Jamie, that people don't feel comfortable talking about, but I've had found so many women, even at the conference, you remember people just shared very openly. I've had moments, oh, I think you, you went there the second day, uh, that Salonia shared on the stage, and I can share this here because, I mean, she shared it, you know, with the room and she doesn't mind sharing it, that she even contemplated taking her life because life just got overwhelming. And she was a Marine and she was, she used to see people see me and she goes, I'm, they see me as strong and, you know, this, that, and the other. And sometimes we typecast what strength looks like and typecast what, you know, strong looks like. Um, but I think if we can communicate more like, hey, this is how low I'm feeling in this moment, getting someone to talk to, like you mentioned, and to reach out to and kind of work through can make a huge difference. Yeah. It just does. Yeah. And so and I know that's not always an easy statement. And I know that um, it's, there's so much to all of this. It just really is. But just to take the first step of reaching out to someone that can, you can talk to. Yeah. So yeah. share with us a little bit about how someone can work with you and how they can reach out to you. Yes. So I uh, I do things a little differently than what a lot of coaches out there do. Yeah. I do not offer any form of group coaching. I strictly only do one-on-one -on -one, um, mm -hmm. because I want to work with those individuals that the work ethic is already there, right? Yeah. That's not yeah. the issue. It's, it's just, the, again, the things that they're running from and just helping build that confidence, be the accountability, be the support. The, the support. I like to say the blind spots, right? Like even mm -hmm. an Olympic athlete has a coach. Yeah. I'm not here to play therapist to you to sit here and 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 walk through that. Like I'm, I'm not a therapist. I quite yeah. literally cannot do that <laughs> as a coach. But I mean, to be able to like have that space to like, again, take the trash out, like air it out and see it in front of you for what it is like. Um, and I have this uh, post pinned on my Instagram page too, but it said, um, I explained kind of like that 
the therapist is the why I'm the what, like, we know why this is happening. We know why we function this way. We know why we're hurting, but what are we going to do about it? So I, I, I take, I take it, um, I believe in in balance within my coaching where I think it's important to like sit in the mud together, but it's also important to go high level and start talking strategy and, and right. daily habits and, and training of the brain as I say it. But um, yeah, it, it's important to get both of those and mm-hmm. but it's nice, especially for men, but also the, the, the women that, you know, feel that strength is that I can't show that that's where I come mm-hmm. in. You can nice. keep being the strong friend to those people And it's not going to impact anything. That's what you have me for. You have another strong person who's going to be like, nah, I call BS. You're telling Mm -hmm. me this, but I can see it on your face. Like you're lying to me and you're lying to yourself right now. Let's talk Mm -hmm. it out. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of what that is. But to work with me is I I very much also because of this is I I make sure I take somebody through an interview process to qualify them to make sure one that they're ready. Um, Mm -hmm. It's going to get gunky but you're not yeah. sitting in there alone. I'm in the trenches with you. So you can book a discovery call with me and everything on there is completely confidential. It's between yeah. us. And that's where we can even see if we're fit together, if this is something mm-hmm. that you're finally ready to face. And then, and then from there, we get to embark on a journey together. All of my coaching is virtual. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what it looks mm-hmm. like and what it would be. Thank you. And I'm, I, I will encourage everyone, we'll put your information out, out here as well. Um, but if you are dealing with this area, it's definitely worth hiring someone um, like Jamie and hiring Jamie, period, actually. Because one thing when I asked you earlier about why this is something you're passionate about, um, I have found even in my own um, years of working that it's so much better to work with someone that understands the journey, not from a theoretical standpoint, not from an education standpoint. You know, I think education is bad, everyone. So, yeah. <laughs> but when you walk through something, you can relate to someone differently. Absolutely. And because you have walked through it, you are definitely a great person for someone to say, look, can you walk through this with me? And like you mentioned, you're not trying to hold their hand, but you're trying to help them to identify the what and how to kind of get to that next place. And so I definitely want to encourage anyone, if you are in this space, contact Jamie. So what's your website? Tell us your podcast information, all the things so that we know. And we'll also like, you know, uh, uh, was it tag it as well? But I want you to also share it here. Yes. Yes. So as you guys can see on the screen here, I'm, it's difficult. I'm the Jamie with a Y, no eyes. <laughs> um, I, I always highly encourage cyber stalking me too. If this didn't uh, explain to you enough who I am. Yeah. I give approval. Stalking isn't creepy if somebody gives you the approval. I'm intentional about what I post, so you are able to stalk and not feel bad about right. it. Right. Um, um, but so, uh, like on Instagram and Facebook, it is uh, well on Instagram, it's Jamie the Coach, so J A Y M E. I'm also on Facebook. Um, I just mm-hmm. recently started doing my podcast, um, also um, from a video standpoint. So I have that on YouTube as well. My podcast is on Apple, Google. Spotify and iHeartRadio, and it's called Make mm-hmm. Time for Your Mind with Coach Jamie. And that is exactly mm-hmm. what it's all about. It's forcing nice. you to sit, like I, I challenge your perspective. That's the whole point of the podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that. You can message me through any of the social media platforms if you want to book a call. All It all goes to the same device anyway. Um, but also mm-hmm. is jamiesharlacoaching.com, which... Mm-hmm. That that link, we're not even going to waste the time to spell it out. That'll, that'll, be, in the, that'll be in the comments. You can go straight to the website. Too. Thank <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jamie, for your time and for your insights, your vulnerability, and just being you. I just absolutely adore you. And I just thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. And thank you guys for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to check out that, that recent drop of her article. That's going to be amazing. I can't wait to read that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone have a great day.